Good evening, African Confessions. I am back with another episode. There is a message that I want to share with you guys, and the message reads like this. Hello, how are you, Brother Nashi? Please post my story as anonymous. Brother Nashi, I am not a social media fan, and I am someone who doesn't understand this thing of people being on social media 24-7. But lately, I've been following on your channel, and I know that if I contacted you, maybe I'll be able to get some help. Let me explain my story in full details. I have quite a very big business and I run this company in Zim. And the company that I am running, I make this thing called RhinoSet. And I have different shops around the country. I also have many cars. But my money is not clean money, Brother Nashi. The money that I have, it is just blood money. I did a money-making ritual. And because of the way that I am interacting with the spiritual realm, I am someone whom I can say I am just a heartless man. What happens to me is that if you try to stand in my way, either by prayer or by doing anything that will try to disturb my business. I will kill anyone who stands in my way, who tries to disturb the peace that will be there in my business. After I have killed that person, I will start to use that person's spirit so that my business can become prosperous. I have a tokology that was given to me. This tokology, each and every year, it needs to drink blood from three different people. It doesn't matter that I sacrifice my relatives or if I sacrifice strangers. All that it needs is three people per year. Brother Nashi, what made me to get involved in all of this? It is because I lost my parents when I was still in grade 7. When I was in grade 10, there was no money in the house for me to sit down for my grade 10 exams. There was just no hope for me. But what pained me the most about my story is that even though I had elder brothers, I had five of them. I knew that my father had managed to send all of my brothers, five of them, to school and they had finished their schools, went to university, some of them. Most of them were working professional jobs and I knew that I was covered because I had five brothers. But when I was in grade 10, it shocked me when my brothers told me that there was no money for me to continue with my education. I tried asking them, but they kept on ignoring me. When I saw that there was no hope for me to continue with my education as much as I wanted to succeed in life through education, but that door had been closed, so I had to look for other avenues because I told myself that I wanted to be someone who was independent and who was rich, so I went to see some spiritual so then I went to visit this spiritual seer whom I had heard that she was a good seer who could see everything that was happening in this physical world and everything that was happening in the world beyond. So I went to her. Then I paid the consultation fee. She took me into her room that she did all of her consultation whilst we were in there. That is when a spirit that comes to possess her so that she can see all of the visions of what will be happening in the spiritual realm and in the physical realm took possession of her body. She started to give me my family's history in detail. When she gave me my family's history in detail, she told me that there was a spirit of a dead person that was roaming around in our family and it was just not any spirit but it was a vengeful spirit. She then prophesied and she said that this same vengeful spirit is the one that caused the death of your father. This really shocked me. So in our culture, this vengeful spirit, it is called Ngozi. This happens when one of your relatives goes out and murders someone. So when the spirit of that person that would have been murdered by your relatives rises up from the dead, that spirit will hunt each and every family member. It will come to seek and to destroy each and every family member. That seer told me that this vengeful spirit was against my family. 
we had to make plans to find the family so that we can repay the blood that was spilled by one of our relatives. But there was no unity in our family. I didn't want to be involved in all of this. From that seer, I looked from another traditional healer who could help me. There was another man who helped me. Then that man gave me a connection to this other witch doctor who was in Tanzania. After working for a couple of years, that is when I managed to raise some money so that I can travel to Tanzania. When I went there, he told me that such spirits can make someone rich. That witch doctor in Tanzania told me that he knew of a spell that was more like a snare. We could set a trap for this vengeful spirit that was causing destruction in our family. That same vengeful spirit that he had killed off my father. So he made a trap so that I can be rich. Then he trapped that vengeful spirit inside a clay pot where this spirit is forever trapped. For me to keep this spirit as a prisoner inside that clay pot, I have to feed it with blood. Whenever I do a ritual, then I sacrifice someone, either be it a stranger or one of my relatives. Then I also trap the spirit of that person inside that clay pot. Then I pour blood into that clay pot so that the vengeful spirit can never thirst and it can keep on working for me. So what this vengeful spirit does is that whenever I feed it with the blood of one of my relatives or with the blood of a stranger that I would have sacrificed, then when it has drunk the blood, it will help me to get good deals that will bring money in my business. All my brothers are poor because after I had traveled from Tanzania, I kept on doing a lot of rituals so that they can remain poor. They don't have a good life. This was a form of revenge for the time that they had told me that there was no money for me to continue with my education. The only challenge that I am facing in my life, Brother Nashi, is that I don't have a wife and I sleep with this tokoloshi. What I do is that three times a week, I have to perform this ritual. The way that I perform this ritual, it is more like sex magic. I sleep on my bed. Then I make sure that I have to masturbate. And when I masturbate, I masturbate pointing my manhood into that clay pot so that all of my semen can flow straight into that clay pot. And this is a way of me feeding that tokoloshi. I also sleep with a lot of women, even though I cannot marry those women that I sleep with. It doesn't matter how beautiful they are, but I sleep with them so as to complete the rituals that I do. I did these rituals so that I can survive. I didn't want to be a poor man. I don't have a child. So I know that when I die, then it means that my name will forever be forgotten. No one will ever remember me because that witch doctor told me that I will never be able to have a physical baby because of this sex magic that I keep on doing me masturbating then pointing my manhood into that clay pot so that all of my sperm can fall into that clay pot this is my story dear brother dear listeners right there was a message that i received from anonymous and i had to ask one of our admins to give us a translation hoping that the story was not lost in translation please let us meet again in the following episode